Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all new Lenovo Y50 2015 edition with an all new IPS panel and an NVIDIA 960M. Let's go ahead and see if it's worth picking up. So here's the all new 2015 Lenovo IdeaPad Y50. For 2014, the Y50 was one of the most popular gaming laptops on the market. The only knock that many users had was the display was not on par compared to other gaming laptops. But you have to remember the Y50 has very good specs for this kind of price. Anyways, for 2015, the pricing usually starts at $899 US for the base model, and that's with Lenovo's weekly specials. Now, if you step up to the 949 model, you'll get the upgraded Full HD IPS panel and an 860M. All of them will be equipped with a quad-core i7-4710HQ or 4720 HQ. The model we have here features a 960M and the new IPS panel. This model usually retails for $1299 US, however, Lenovo currently has it on sale for $1079 US. The design and build quality of the Y50 looks very sleek and stylish. You get a brushed metal finish on the top and the bottom that feels very nice. The only downside here is there are a fingerprint magnet. So keep your fingers clean before handling this laptop. The interior features a soft touch palm rest that feels pretty good especially during extended gaming periods. You get that beautiful two tone keyboard that blends perfectly with this kind of laptop. The weight comes in at 5.29 pounds and measures 0.9 inches thick. This is a pretty slim and lightweight gaming laptop compared to others on the market. There is some heavy keyboard flex, especially in the centerpiece. However, for casual typing and gaming, I wouldn't be too concerned. And for our exterior, the build quality feels pretty durable. I tried pressing out very firmly here and it barely budges. For your ports on the left side, you get your AC charging port, gigabit ethernet port, full size HDMI port, and two USB 3.0 ports. On the right side, you got your Kensington security lock slot, USB 2.0 port, an SD card reader, headset microphone jack combo, and your SP diff port. On the top side, you got your Novo recovery button, which will guide you through the recovery process, and your power button. And here's your AC power adapter. It's pretty light and compact compared to other gaming laptop power bricks. It also does a great job of powering this laptop without any throttling. The biggest change this year to the Y50 is obviously the screen. Lenovo chose to go with an IPS panel from LG instead of Chimei or AU. Out of the box, the colors are a bit off. However, once I calibrated, it was much better. The color accuracy on this panel has been improved but still falls short of the competition. The sRGB came in at 68% and the Adobe RGB came in at 51%. So if you plan on having accurate color reproduction for your video and photo work, you better look elsewhere. Now where it has been improved most overall is the viewing angles. This new IPS panel now gives you a wider viewing angle compared to last year's version. The brightness levels for indoor use were pretty good, however for outdoor usage it was kinda dim. This Y50 features an anti-glare panel that does a great job of blocking out reflections. During my gaming sessions, I had no issues with glare. Now keep in mind, if you get the touchscreen or 4K version, those models have a glossy display that is very reflective. One of the downsides to this panel is these huge bezels right here. They tend to get scratches very easily, so be careful when closing your laptop. Another complaint I had on the Y50 was a huge amount of bloatware that Lenovo put on here. The good news here is you can remove them manually or use a program like CCleaner to remove them. And yes, I did check for the Superfish plugin and certificate, and there's no evidence of it being installed here. The Core i7-4720HQ is a beast. It's clocked at 2.6GHz with a turbo boost up to 3.6GHz for one active core. From video editing to intense gaming, this CPU has been begging to be pushed. Overall, the performance from this quad-core i7 has been spectacular. And let's back that up with some Geekbench 3 performance scores. For the single core score, I got 3056. And for the multi core score, I got 11,560. And for Cinebench R15, I got a CPU score of 518 CB. Again, with these kind of scores, you can expect blazing fast performance. Now we're going to stress test the CPU using a program called Prime95. We're going to use this test for around 15 minutes and we'll take a look at the temperatures. Now keep in mind, I did not experience any throttling with this Core i7-4720HQ. For the whole test, it maintained its 2.6 GHz base clock speed. After 15 minutes, the highest temperatures I got was around 85 degrees Celsius with an average of 76 to 80 degrees Celsius. Now to measure the thermal heat, I'm going to use the Fleur 1 thermal imaging camera for the iPhone 5S. Let's go ahead and take a look. The keyboard section is starting to get very warm at this point. You're averaging around 41 to 44 degrees Celsius. And for the back side, that's where you're going to feel the most heat. The high was around 48 degrees Celsius. Now let's talk about the all new NVIDIA 960M. Many of you guys may be disappointed because the performance gain is very minimal compared to the NVIDIA 860M. For example, the only major difference between the 860M and the 960M is the core clock speed and the core turbo speed. The 860M has a clock speed of 1029MHz compared to the 960M which has a speed of 1097MHz. 
and the core terminal clock speed of the 860M is 1097 megahertz compared to the 960M which has a core clock turbo speed of 1202 megahertz so basically this just means you can expect an increase of 7 to 10 percent in performance i just wish lenovo gave us an option of a 970M on the high end which is roughly 60 percent faster overall however since this is a gaming laptop aimed at budget gamers the 960M is a pretty good match you can expect to play many of today's high end games on medium to high settings and some games can even run on ultra settings if you tweak them right. And here's some benchmarks for the 960M. For the Cinebench R15, I got an OpenGL score of 95.47 frames per second. Compared to the 860M, I averaged around 91 frames per second. For Firestrike, I got a score of 3,936. For Skydiver, I got a score of just over 12,000. And for Cloudgate, I got a score of 14,355. Now if you don't feel like tweaking your settings manually, you can use the NVIDIA GeForce Experience and it'll adjust the settings optimal for your game. Alright guys, enough of these boring benchmarks, let's go and launch Battlefield 4 on high settings at 1920 by 1080p. Alright, who's in here? Yeah, y'all don't want none of this tank. Yeah, you better run. Woo! Oh, man. Alright, I see somebody here. Oh, get down! So you can see this game is running pretty smooth here at 1920 by 1080p. I'm averaging around 55 to 65 frames per second and it's running buttery smooth. Overall, if you choose a Y50 with an NVIDIA 860M or 960M, you're going to get an enjoyable gaming experience. Now I did notice a lot of screen tearing on the Y50. To minimize that, you want to go into your options, go to video, and turn on vertical sync. This will minimize your screen tearing dramatically. Take a look here. After our extended Battlefield 4 match, our highest GPU temperature was around 85 degrees Celsius. Now how does the thermal imaging compare now since we've been playing Battlefield 4 for around 40 minutes? Now the backside we did get up to 60 degrees Celsius. And let's take a look at the keyboard section. We're around 48 to 50 degrees Celsius. Now the keys are starting to feel very warm at this point, especially the D key. And let's take a look at the bottom cover. Here we got around 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. And the backside we're going to get around 52 degrees Celsius. This trackpad has a matte plastic finish unlike the glass type found on the ThinkPad laptops. Two finger scrolling and multi-touch gestures have been smooth and precise. However, my trackpad did exhibit some issues. For example, my trackpad would randomly move by itself. Check it out here. It's most likely defected because my previous Y50 had no problems with the trackpad. The AccuType keyboard is actually pretty comfortable to type on. The key travel is good, especially for a thin and light gaming laptop like the Y50. The tactile feedback is great and the small shaped keys offer good comfort. The only downside here is the 10 key numeric keypad does feel crammed. You also get a two stage backlighting, either medium or high. And sorry, there are no multiple color options like the MSI laptops. Now another nice addition to the keyboard that people seem to forget is the caps lock and the number lock has LEDs to let you know that they're on. Next up is the webcam test on the Y50 and the camera quality is awful. Here goes a demo of it in action. Hey, what's up YouTube? There's a webcam test on the Y50 here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Next up is battery performance. This laptop features a 54 watt hour battery pack. With web browsing, mixed video streaming, and word processing, I was averaging around 3.5 to 4.5 hours out of full charge with screen brightness at around 70%. And if you plan on gaming on the battery pack, expect around an hour and 30 minutes of gameplay depending on your settings. Oh, and by the way, expect a dip in performance while gaming on battery mode. The sound you're going to get from this laptop are two top facing JBL speakers and a subwoofer on the bottom. The sound quality is good and the subwoofer does a great job of giving that low end kick during your intense gaming sessions. And here's a demo of them in action. We're going to start off at 50% and go up from there. And finally, let's take a look at the internal components of the Lenovo Y50 2015 edition. First up, you have your Broadcom BCM4352, which offers excellent performance. This is a 2x2 card that gives you fast, reliable speeds and a solid connection. However, the Intel 3160 found on some models does a great job too. But keep in mind, if you want the best performance, go for the 2x2 Broadcom chip. Followed by your 7mm Western Digital 1TB hard drive running at 5400rpm with an 8GB cache of SSD. The performance can be slow at times, so make sure you upgrade to an SSD for the best performance. Lenovo, for the next generation, can we at least get a 7200rpm hard drive? 
followed by your two DIMM slots for your RAM. This one features 16 gigabytes of PC3-12800 RAM. The fan noise levels is fairly quiet during casual usage, however quickly fire up Battlefield 4 and you'll hear this beast running. It can get loud at times, but just crank up the volume and ignore the fans running. If you're looking for one of the best gaming laptops on the market that feature an 860M or the new 960M without breaking the bank, then the Y50 should be on your list. The display has improved viewing angles, and the price has dropped a lot compared to last year's release. Check out Lenovo.com for all their weekly specials on these laptops. You can sometimes get a base Y50 with an 860M and an IPS panel for around 949 US. That's an excellent price for this kind of performance. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the Honor Lenovo Y50. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.